In this lab, you'll determine the value of pi by measuring diameters and circumferences of various circles. So it really helps if you have nice cylindrical objects. You also want to have varying diameters. This is just a sample of some of the items I found around my house. Look around and see what you've got. You want small diameters, large diameters, and everything in between. If you have a set of measuring cups like this that are nice and cylindrical in shape, that's an easy way to get three or four different diameter circles. The key is you want varying diameters, some small, some large. And we need to measure the diameter and the circumference. If you have a nice caliper like this one, it gives you very accurate readings and it's great for measuring the diameter of a circle. You probably don't have one like that. And even if you did, it only goes up to about six inches, so it wouldn't help you on your largest circles. So I'm gonna show you how to make a caliper out of a meter stick or ruler. This is what I'm gonna use as my ruler. You could just measure the diameter directly, but that's a little tricky. I like to make my ruler into a set of calipers by using a couple of wooden blocks. As long as those blocks are nice and square, 90 degree angles, you can press them up against your ruler and it measures the diameter of that circle very nicely. Just remove it and look at the difference between the two readings. If you don't have a couple of blocks of wood like this, any nice square objects will work. These are jewel cases from some DVDs. They work just as well. And if your DVD is about the physics show, it works really well. Now that we've measured the diameter, we need to measure the circumference of our circles. The easiest way is probably to use a string. Wrap it around and measure the distance. As you're taking measurements, it's always a good idea to think about what could be causing error in your measurements. So as an example, when I'm measuring the diameter of this object, I'm limited by the scale on my ruler. I'm using a ruler that has millimeters as the smallest increment. And so I'm somewhere on this can, I measure somewhere between 26 and 27 millimeters. The smallest increment is one millimeter. So I have to interpolate. I have to say, is it 26.6? Is it 26.7 millimeters? I'm sort of guessing between the last two marks on that ruler. And that is called random error. Sometimes I guesstimate a little high, sometimes a little low. Sometimes your errors cause you to always be off in the same direction. For example, if I'm measuring the circumference of this can, if there's something about the way I'm measuring this circumference, that always pushes me in the same direction, that always causes me to measure the circumference to be smaller than it actually is, then that's a systematic error. And that's important because if your measurement is always off in the same direction, then at the end, you think about what that does to your measurement of pi. If my circumference is too small and my measurement of pi is off high or low, would the circumference being small cause my measurement of pi to be high or low? If it pushed me in the right direction, then that's probably a good source of error. If it didn't, there must be a bigger source of error in the way I'm doing my measurements.